whether it be literature, visual art, film, theater, or photography, we have seen the effect and the result of self-expression through art as human beings are filled with passion. However, the creativity of self-expression can lead you to very bizarre scopes of what we define as art. Territories we cannot fathom the existence of because more often than not, we tend to look at the conception of art to be one based on reality. One that is defined as it is clearly stated in the tangible realm. And being the artists we are, we are inclined to the unknown. More specifically, how about the intangible realm? Or the artistic reality not based in the physical world? Well, say hello to Andre Robert Breton, the co-founder, leader, and principal theorist of the Surrealist Movement. What is Surrealism, you may ask? It is a manner of artistically expressing yourself in such a way to go beyond the physical world and into the deep depths of representing the human subconscious and its lucid dreams, inspired by the theories of Sigmund Freud in Breton's book, Manifeste du Surrealisme. Surrealism to new artists or even artists with some experience find it vaguely shrouded in mystery, most likely because the subject matter of surrealist paintings or drawings are quite abstract and can vary between artists. That's why today I'm going to try to create a surrealist work inspired by an equally abstract concept that I just so happened to find a couple of days ago, specifically a random tethered speech by Steven Pinker, Tabula Raza. Now to give you a quick background on what Tabula Raza is. John Locke was born August 29, 1632 in Rington, Somerset, England, as one of the most prominent and influential Enlightenment thinkers. In the realm of philosophy, Locke is remembered to clearly define one such speculation as pondered upon by many philosophers before his day. This concept became familiarized as, you may already know, tabula rasa. Tabula rasa is the philosophical belief that all human beings are born without any preconceived knowledge. Thus, all human beings gain knowledge post-birth through experience and observation. Now, the etymology of tabula rasa comes from the Latin phrase usually translated as blank slate in English. Take note of that. Tabula rasa, in its most basic ideology, implies the theory of empiricism as a representation or a specified branch of what its creator is known for. Empiricism is defined as a theory that states that knowledge is gained only or primarily from sensory experience. Thus, every child's knowledge and personality is entirely dependent on external experiences. But to go straight ahead drawing the artwork is to disregard an important technical facet when creating a piece in a specific genre. Yes, surrealism is based on the self-expression of your subconscious, but when comes surrealist self-expression also comes some genre-specific techniques. What we need to ask ourselves is, what is the surrealist aesthetic characterized by? Let's look for some examples. Juxtaposition is a surrealist technique that revolves around placing two contrasting objects near each other to elicit a response from the audience's point of view. To put it simply, juxtaposition makes you think, and because it gives a peculiar aura and meaning to the piece, it separates it as out of the ordinary, thus it's more interesting to look at. The incoherent objects forces the viewer to see its coherence using their own imagination. We can see this in René Magritte's painting, Son of Man. He explains his juxtaposition like this. At least it hides the face, partly. Well, so you have the apparent face, the apple, hiding the visible but hidden, the face of the person. It's something that happens constantly. Everything we see hides another thing. We always want to see what is hidden by what we see. There's an interest in that which is hidden and which the visible does not show us. This interest can take the form of quite intense feeling, a sort of conflict, one might say, between the visible that is hidden and the visible that is present. Transformation, another technique, is quite self-explanatory, an object changing from one form to another. You can see this in Salvador Dali's Galatea of the Spheres. This location is seen in another of Magritte's paintings, 
time transfixed. This technique is one of the staples in early and modern surrealism. Golconda, a piece again by Magritte, shows the important surrealist motif in levitation. Last but not least, scale. The technique of amplifying the subject size or diminishing it. One such example is Dali's The Listening Room. Now, these are a few of the most important surrealist techniques and motives that make up the genre's aesthetic. Of course, I was only able to characterize out the surrealist aesthetic after a thorough research. I made notes on the movement's origin, its leading figures, the famous paintings, their meanings, symbolisms, and similarities with other works. My approach to representing Tabula Rasa starts with the question, what is the root of this concept? I think this is an essential question because it makes us realize the undermining purpose of the concept, further helping us make details and symbolism stemming from the root. Now, remember what I told you to take note of? The English translation of Tabula Rasa, the blank slate. A blank slate could be seen as nothing, as in a blank sheet of paper, or it could also be something that has been erased, leaving only minuscule trails. These are both reasonable representations, however, I don't think it captures the essence of Tabula Rasa as a whole. What I keep going back to is not a portrayal that is erased or lifeless with no meaning. Instead, I see the blank slate as sort of a new beginning, a starting point where one can build different memories or identifications over time on top of one another. Something that resembles building blocks, or maybe a puzzle. Now, I chose the puzzle as the main theme because puzzle pieces represent a process. A special process where each piece added is contributing to the whole picture, and that if there's even one piece missing, it'll be classed incomplete. At the same time, puzzle pieces give a sense of mystery, as you never know the outcome you're gonna get. No, I use the human face as my way of interpreting and conveying the main theme and the main concept because our face is our identity. It's what unequivocally distinguishes us from others in a physical manner. And I wanted to portray the face as having three separate layers, the skin, the muscles, and the skull, because it symbolizes the overarching astuteness of human's nature and personality. The hands building and putting the puzzle piece all together enforces the notion that process and change is something that takes time to happen. Meanwhile, the different hand positions are reminiscent of how people with different characters slowly but surely also contribute to who we are. The Dreamcatcher is honestly a subject I joined last minute because I was a bit hesitant beforehand, but eventually I saw it as a component that gives a sort of composition offset, since most of the subject is situated in the center whilst the Dreamcatcher is on the bottom right. On the other hand, the Dreamcatcher is the talisman for dreams, obviously. The subject of surrealism as a whole emphasizes the most. For color, I mainly used a more warm toned palette for the skin, the muscles of the heart and the hands, because I think warm colors depict the passion, the love, and the peace of our society, yet at the same time depicts the opposite, hate, anger, and fear. However, I chose some parts of the drawing to possess a cooler tonality. For instance, the skull. As the first stage in the process of assembling the puzzle, I chose more neutral and dull colors, such as gray, white, and black. For the dream catcher in the left eye, I emphasized blue and purple as it complements the illusionary reality and psychic subconscious the objects denote. Lastly, the green hints on the branches embody life, the life that stems from the symbolic core of your being, the heart. I also made use of the surrealist techniques I mentioned earlier. I used levitation when drawing the hands, dislocation of the heart replacing the right eye, and its scale diminished from the normal size. Whereas transformation is seen where the top section of the heart begins to transform into these branches, and most importantly, the juxtaposition and the pairing of both the eye and the heart. To quickly explain the reason behind these techniques, I used levitation on the hands because stereotypically, levitating objects or beings have some power at least. In this case, 
power to drastically affect the outcome of the person. I dislocated the heart to replace the right eye because I wanted to spotlight the emotional status of a person's being, not the intellectual status as the dominant feature on the right side. Frankly, I didn't think too deep about scale. You could say that I made the heart smaller just to fit the eye socket of the skull, but that's about it. I decided to put my efforts into the last two techniques. Transformation. When you think about vines and branches, what do you think of? For me, I think of growth, but not just any kind of growth, but growth that happened because of reason. In this case, the reason and the purpose is whatever your heart wants it to be, and whatever comes from your heart is a direct manifestation of what is inside of it. And I chose life. Life in the vines and in the branches, lindens, oaks, and whatever plant it may be. This brings me to my last technique, juxtaposition. The main contrast I wanted to point out is the contrast between the right eye side and the left eye side. Since the left eye side portrays the logical, more human way of thinking, perceiving, and judging, while the right eye side portrays human thought, the innate and intrinsic ideas and emotions that eventually grow and blossom. So this is my finished surrealism artwork. To wrap things up, I just want to clarify that I don't believe in tabula rasa as it has been scientifically disproven and it does conflict with what I believe, so many of the blank slate symbolisms and meanings aren't necessarily things that I would personally draw other than for the sake of the original concept. Nevertheless, tabula rasa does make an exceptionally interesting topic to draw about, write poetry about, and whatever other creative things you can do, especially as an abstract equivalent to surrealism. So I guess that's a wrap. Thank you for coming along with me. I hope you enjoyed this just as much as I enjoyed making this video. If you're interested in surrealism or tabula rasa, I've attached some further reading in the description below. These are some of the resources I discovered during my own research process. Peace.